Hello. Hi. Hello, Tragic. How are you? How are you? How are you? You can hear me all right, right? Yeah. Okay. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I just, here. Hmm? I just ate a bagel, so. Let's go. Bagel clan. Okay. So, for everybody who doesn't know, uh, Tragic is a fucking goaded player. So, Tragic, you play on point four aim assist. I have to context this at the beginning of every tr of every <laughs> coaching session because everyone's gonna be like, "Dude, please shit that guy." And it's like, "No, this motherfucker plays on a PS5?" Question mark. Yep. Yeah. 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 So this guy plays on a PS5 with point four aim assist of 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 his own choosing, which is insane. Fucking good shit. It's really mm. it's it really it's really cool, and it shows that no matter what, you can't make excuses for yourself on console. So if you're true, out there, yeah. if you're out there, stop making excuses. Go on point four and and just be a better player today. Come on. Yeah. Uh, you know what, dude? That ass, that could probably be a TikTok. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, we had one coaching session with you. You were actually like one of my first students that I had. Uh, yeah. And we talked about uh, breaking down like game like game plans and game sense and stuff like that, and kind of understanding the plans of actions and fights, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, how has that been going for you since then? I know it's been like four months but still uh pretty good i think i've been a lot more confident in my fights that's good which is good and just like challenging everything instead of i used to like just do poke damage all the time because i was too scared to actually fight so i've been doing pretty like good mm. <laughs> noticed a lot of improvement okay so what would you say your biggest um setback as a player is right now, right now i think the, some situations I just I don't know what to do. Okay. Um. Yeah, you are already a very advanced player, so everything that I can I mean I, I can break down a lot of uh, advanced concepts to you and a lot of advanced just things in general to you. Uh, yeah. I think you probably will benefit a lot less from mechanical breakdown. Um, maybe some like really advanced mechanics, but I think yeah. probably my best guess is that you will probably benefit a lot more from just knowing game theory and how the game works and how the game flows and like that, rather than just teaching you, here's how you play this and like stuff like that, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. And I mean, like, your stats are insane. I mean, you know, it's console, so obviously it's inflated a little bit, but you still have good fundamental skills. Like, you fucking destroy people. Um, yeah. I mean, like, you beat me in the range. You're fucking, you're good, you're good. <laughs> um, so going into this, um, what... Uh, so you sent me this VOD, right? And it has, let me see. It's a full game and then two short clips where I was completely lost what to do. Okay. Um, so we'll go over the, we'll go over the full game first and break down the full game. Uh, is this yep. no fill trios or duos? It's, uh, it's trios. That's fucking, that's what I, that's what, that's, that's what I love to see. I told you last time that you sent me a duos VOD and I'm like, come on. We need to <laughs> challenge yourself more. So you need yeah. no fill trios is awesome. Um... So from here, uh, and I assume this is your friend. Um, yeah. So uh, since this is a full game, I'm assuming it's going to end in a win or you're going to end pretty highly. Um, and then the other two clips, uh, these are just individual clips isolated, right? Uh, yeah. But I'm not knowing what to do? Okay. Um, so we'll talk about this game, how it could have been better or things you could have done better in, in a situation. Uh, before we start, do you have any questions or comments or anything that you want to make sure there's known before we start this? Um, oh, am I supposed to be seeing your screen right now? Oh, yeah, I forgot the screen, I forgot the <laughs> screen share. I forgot the screen share. Okay, you, can, right. see me, okay, you can see my screen, right? Yep. If I draw on it, you can see it? Yep. Okay, perfect. Okay. Uh, okay, yeah, so. Bar, bar, uh, bar any questions, right? No questions at all? Uh, no, yeah, we're good. Okay, we'll go ahead and start. So... So it is World's Edge. Everybody's gonna go collapse Fragment, obviously, right? But do you? But are are you keeping a mental note of how um the dropship is going, for more, for for the maximum number of kills? Um. Do, do you do, do you know how to do that? Would you like an explanation of that? I I think I I think I know. Okay. Well, let's go over it in case. Just okay. So we have this interactive map of World's Edge. It's cool. Um. So let us. Wait, I didn't know these had names. Hill Valley. A mining pass. I didn't know these had names. What the fuck? 
It's cool. Um, so let's do orange for the dropship here. So your dropship was basically this, it looks like. This was your dropship. It started here and went over Lava Siphon, went to Frag. So obviously the number one point, there's going to be like 30 players Frag, right? There's going to be 30, like th over like 30, more, 30 or more players here, right? Um, the one thing we look for when it comes to a dropship, right, is you have, you have to realize the kind of players that, that are going to be playing the game. So if you start here, right, at the launch ship, uh, what would you say the average fan of players would, would be like? Probably some people Lava Siphon. Okay, so we'll mark Lava Siphon. Launch site. Okay. And maybe Harvester, and then there might be a few people going like Geyser. Okay. Who want to loot for okay. the entire game. And then obviously, obviously, frag exists, right? Yeah. Um. Okay. Is that it? Um. Maybe a few like stragglers going other places. Maybe like a uh, skyhook. Okay. Um. So the important thing to know, especially when it comes to this map, or especially especially when it comes to World's Edge, this is a very bad World's Edge problem, obviously. But like the ship is gonna just lose thirty people, forty people in frag, right? Yeah. Can, you, can, can, can you hear my dog, by the way? Uh, no. No? Okay. Chat. <laughs> Wait, chat. Can you guys hear my dog or no? You guys can. That's awesome. Um, but the, uh, so frag obviously is just going, you can? Okay. That sucks. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. So frag's just gonna eat 40 people. 40 people are just gonna die in frag. Like, it's just, it's what happens, right? But it depends on what point that this is gonna happen, right? So, so, so the ship obviously starts in, um, the ship starts in like launch site tree side, right? Um, most people are gonna land in, in like one of three POIs or one out of four POIs in my experience. Lava siphon, frag, countdown, or skyhook. I would say this is like 90% of the time is where people go, but I've had games where there's 20 people in ship and the ship goes like this. And I'm like, what where, where the fuck did you guys go? We're going, <laughs> we're going skyhook countdown? When is this, right? Um so these are like the four POIs I would actually break down that people go to because they're really dense. There's a lot of very well, countdown isn't really dense, but people still go there. But um, this is like these are like the four POIs I would actually count people to go to. And the reason why the re reason why is because um, one, the dropship naturally goes this way, right? So the number the number one place I'd put for player density would be number one, would be here, right? Number one is frag, obviously, no matter what. Basically, no matter what, frag is always number one. Number two would probably be lava siphon, because um. It's, I mean, it's the close. It's the closest condensed POI to anywhere else, right? Like tree is too small for a lot of players. Launch sites, not really popular. Like harvesters aren't really popular. Guys aren't really popular, right? And like obviously there can be one to two teams in these places, but when it comes to trying to find as many people as possible, it doesn't really matter if there's one to two people there, right? Because you want yeah. play, you want groups of four, five, six, seven, eight plus teams, right? Uh, that's why people struggle a lot on Broken Moon, but why Broken Moon can be the best map for high kill games, because uh, if we look at a map like uh. If we look at like Broken Moon, can I open the same tab? No, okay, whatever. If we look at Broken Moon, right? If a, it, if a dropship goes like this, a team, like people might, like there might be a couple teams here, but like Core, Dry Gulch, Promenade, Terraformer, like you can tell where basically every team's gonna be, right? Like this is basically where every team's gonna be. Um, and so, I mean, I broke it down in the world record uh, kills video. Um, but the guy landed core, walked this way, walked this way, tried to find somebody, walked back this way, walked this way. And I mean, that's where the dropship went, you know? Like, that's literally where people just fanned out to because he looked at where people were going to go. So when it comes to... Uh, so based off of the first 30 seconds of the, or 10 seconds of this video, right? If, you, if the dropship goes like this... Um, if the dropship goes, um, like this, right? Oops, bigger. If the dropship goes like this. That's way too big. Dropship goes like, please, like this, right? Uh, and you and you and you want to land frag, which is completely fine. Like you either land frag or or slight lava siphon here, but probably frag, right? And you land frag, assuming you live from frag. Where, like, where should you rotate to? Yeah, absolutely. 100% lava siphon. Go, like, this way and, like, clear this out, you know? 
Mm-hmm. Um, but alternatively, if we if if I present you with another uh, problem, if I present you with an, with another dropship, right? If we go, if we say dropship starts here and goes this way, uh, and you obviously want to land frag, right? This is where you land. Where yeah. do you want? Where do you want to go? Uh, probably countdown. Absolutely, yeah. Because okay. I mean, teams from here, teams from Overlook are gonna go to frag. Mm-hmm. People from down here are probably not really gonna like land here. Obviously, like there's probably not gonna be a lot of teams there. No. Um, teams are probably gonna be over here and skyhook countdown. So the so the best chance for you to get kills is over here, right? Obviously, this changes with ring, because if we throw a ring like um, if we throw a dropship like this, right? We throw a dropship like this, and then ring is like a. It's like this. Now where would you go? Um, go to harvester and try to catch people rotating. Absolutely, you go, count them. Exactly, you go harvester. You play like the hill right here, maybe. Go yep. like like because if you kill everybody in frag, right? You kill everybody in frag. Then the the rest of the lobby is gonna be isolated to either uh they're either hard playing zone like from here, and it's like I think two to three teams at max at max. If you like, it could be a lot less. Like, a team, team could be do that. Teams from here are gonna fight, go, like, oh shit, and go this way. Maybe hit the vault. Maybe go around this way to staging. You know, they're gonna they're gonna be this way. So this is this is how you want to think about about like the game in general in coordination with with the ring, right? Think about areas where enemies are gonna go. Don't just walk into zone. Think about where enemies are gonna go, right? Because even if you if, if like if this is a weird lobby, right? This ha- that happens a lot to me in like Tokyo servers. If you're in a weird lobby, and I don't know how it is on console. And console probably has some weird lobbies where people dropping. Um, yeah. So if you land frag and there's like five teams here, and then and then there's like nobody else anywhere, right? You're like, huh? Uh, you could also just straight up rotate instead of going to harvester. You could just straight up go like like this. You could just go from frag, in it in into landslide, and then down this way, and then like that way, like that, right? Like it depends on what you want to do. It, it depends. It just it's about being flexible and reading the game state about where people are, you know. Um. And figuring out from the dropship where you can go. This is all information you can just get from the dropship. This is all information you can get from the first 20 seconds of the game, right? Uh, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. This is that, That's the number one thing to get in high, high kill games. You'll get more and more kills that way. It's really important to know. Um, but yeah, so your plan here should be after you go from frag, you should, I should, I should go see you in Lava Siphon by the end, like very soon after you clear frag. I don't like, I don't want, like, I hope you don't, I hope, I hope I don't see you like meander. Go like over here, and then like over here, and then over here. You might, who cares? But like now, you know in the future, especially to cut down on time yeah. like that. Alright. Um. So you're gonna land the broken building. I assume you're gonna go walk to one to one side of a uh, frag and clear it out, right? I go to market. Okay, mar- market on horizon. <laughs> Why line wingman? You have like one of the best loadouts in the game. You don't need to move. They're not. They're not looking at you. And if you do move, you should move like not to dodge here. Uh, I mean, if someone's not looking at you, right? Um, you, you, you watch my stream enough to, to know what mirroring is, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When you're mir- yeah, if someone's if someone's not looking at you and, and they're like far away, just mirror them. Just mirror that guy. It makes it so much easier for you to aim. You know, like you don't need like like like, like I can see you're hard strafing left here to get a better angle on the, on the room. If you're trying to kill that guy, just mirror him. This guy's just dead. Okay, good. Good. Good slide jump through the threshold. Mm-hmm. I chill. I'm such a chow. Okay, not bad. Mm-hmm. 
I was gonna say, you should probably Phoenix your purple. I'm glad you do. It's really, it's really important to keep a higher uh, good armor value, especially no fill. Yeah. You just keep such a big advantage over other teams. You need to keep to the roof. Yep. Do you keep this slot out the whole game? Um, I think so. I think I swap to a, an RE35 later, but... Let's go. So, when you are, um... When you are dealing with multiple opponents here, right? Uh, so right here, right? Like, obviously, you, you crack this guy. You want you want to go chase him, and I agree with that. And I agree with that. And then you come back here, and you you turn around because you hear a guy behind you. This is really good target. This is really good target management. You you understand who the biggest priority is, and in, in, in a situation, it's the guy who's full HP chasing from behind, right? Because even if you go full send yeah. that guy and go kill him, this guy's gonna be shooting you for free the entire time. It's really important to understand that. Hey, um. I have to take care of this guy who's gonna push in the back here, right? And like this is this is objectively a really good call. Someone in the YouTube comments on my world record video, uh, the guy who got the world record, like limbs or whatever, he jump padded to go chase a guy, and I was like, and I was like, I don't think that was the right play. And someone was like, yeah, but if the guy was like one HP. I'm like, yeah, but this guy could have easily just take the pad after him, killed him, right? So it's really important yeah. to to have target management like this. It's this really really good. Uh, the only thing you need to do, the only thing you need to do here is just immediately start strafing to the right. Immediately just start strafing to the right. Because uh, you don't really start, because you start, you, you start driving to the left here, and this guy, I mean, you take an extra like forty damage because of it, right? It, like, if, like if you immediately start driving to the right to understand that the target, because the guy behind you, right? I get a good angle of this place. This is like the perfect angle. Here we go. Because because this guy's like right here, right? This guy can't see you past this corner right here because because of LOS. He has to walk forward here and disengage himself from cover to actually push you. And with this guy right here. And potentially an another teammate, you need to isolate yourself from this guy as soon as possible, right? Like as soon as possible, because this guy just shoots you for free, you can die. Like one wingman headshot, and you can die because yeah. you're like outnumbered here. I, I think I was caught off guard because the acting just snuck up on me with no audio, but I. I uh, you did. I I... You turned around because you heard him. I'm like, like you can hear him in, in the vod, and you turn and you turn around because uh, you turn around like, like a good second before he shows up. Mm -hmm. You hear him like right. Like right here, yeah. You, yeah, you, you heard him, so you turn around here, yeah. And then you, and then you kind of, uh, let's see. Okay. let me look at your strafe. Yeah, you kind of, yeah, you go to instinctively anti mirror, like any good apex weapon player does. But in that, in that situation, it's more, it's more important to break LOS from two people than it is to not take damage from that guy. Because if, because if you look at the relative damage numbers, right? If that, like, like if this guy hits every bullet. If this guy hits every bullet, he does like what 200 damage. If if the guy behind you, or versus if the guy behind you, uh, hits some bullets and this guy hits some bullets, you're probably taking like 300 damage, right? Because they you're being shot by two people, just, you just take way more damage, and you can't, and you can literally just dodge so much less, right? Does that, does that, does that make sense? Tragic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, so, my mic is like weird right now. That's okay. Uh, but yeah, just make sure that you literally that you just hard strafe to break LOS of people. Uh, that like that like this is the number one way to break up enemies in fights. Even on a really small level, things like boxes can do that as well, right? Because if there's yeah. if, if th there's a box like this, and then they're and, and then they're pushing you, but one's pushing this side, and the other's pushing this side, you you have a free one v two as long as you win the one v ones by a good margin, right? Um, mm -hmm. you literally just walk this you peek this guy this side, then this guy pushes you in the back, you like loop around. And then peek this guy on the side of the box, right? Like, and then you can just one v two them off the box like that. This is a really advanced, like, like geometric strafing technique, or just understanding to just always just manage LOS of opponents. I wonder if I have a clip of it still. I might have deleted it last night. Um, this clip. No, I don't think I have it anymore.
And like this is fine. I I would have just thirsted that guy to ass for his armor. Who the fuck is that? <laughs> Who the fuck is that sliding into you? Uh, it's caustic flares. Caustic flares, yeah. I mean, your movement's really good. You focus on you focus on raw movement here, and like raw speed, which is good, which is what you should actually be doing here. You focus on speed rather than accuracy here, because this guy's just sliding into you. He's, he's gonna be easiest target hit in the world because he's just going in, in, in a straight line. But then he just hits the console crouch, the console crouch strafe, you know. So it's like like completely fine here. I would just I would argue. Do you just run away from here? Yeah. Yeah, which like is like it's not I like, would, it's not I would shield swap, but controller leading is so hard. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you, but um I always end up just picking up like uh, seven syringes instead of the shield. Yeah. Uh I argue that it's really really important to practice it. Mm -hmm. Important to force yourself to situations like that because especially in no fill thirsting your kills is so so important, right? Because if you don't, teams can reset and then boom, you wasted three times as many resources as they did being that one knock. And then they just undid it. So it's it's really really important to, to I mean one get familiar with, with controller shield swaps, even though it is technically harder, right? But um what's what sense do you play? Um I used to play I play on ALCs obviously because I have um PC image just on but I used to play the equivalent of four three. Mm. But now I'm on much higher. I think it's what is that a guy little doing? bit lower. <laughs> you look like yeah, you get the full last phoenix kill off. It's a little bit lower than um, I think Jen Burton since. Okay. Yeah. Um, which is definitely fast enough to do to do things like that, you know, like to get yeah. armor swaps. It's like it's like that's probably I mean shell swaps are the number one skill, or it's like the number one apex civic skill gap there is. There's no there's no such thing as shell swaps in other games like at all. It's the only apex civic skill set you sh you need to like really really know. Um, this horizon. Let me back up a little bit. Let's see this here. This guy is just an idiot, and you just punish him for being an idiot. And then he tries to get a full ass Phoenix kid off like an idiot, and then you just kill him. I don't know what he's doing. Right. So at this point here, right. At this point here, you have like no ammo. You have one mag left for a flatline. You have four shield cells. You pop your shield cells here, and then you're done. It's over. You don't really, really much to do. Um. So your number one thought here, right? You have kills. You, you, you have pretty solid kills, but you're, go, but you're going through the fragment pain right now. Of I have so many kills, but I've not, not had a chance to loot a single body because everybody is just fucking like third partying, going crazy. They're stealing my loot, shit like that, right? Um, yeah. So the number one thought, the number one thing you should be right now is you have to have resources to exercise them on opponents, right? Like you literally, I mean, you literally can't win a fight with, with, with no ammo or no guns or anything like that, right? Well, you can. I've done it before. <laughs> you typically can't. You typically can't. You typically can't win a fight with nothing. Um, it's a lot harder to win a fight with nothing. It relies. It requires like really good mechanical decision, or really good mechanics, or really good decision making, or really good bait, or something like that. It requires a really big risk for you to take, right? And obviously, you want to avoid taking risks all the time unless you have to. Sometimes you have to, no matter what. But you want to avoid doing that in most situations. That's the whole we play for second thing, you know. Um. So when it comes to um. Trying to get resources, there's like two things you can do. One, there's one, there's just loot, like loot, like pills, loot bins, loot buildings, and things like that. But you're in fragment. That's not really a good option, right? There's just nothing you can really do. Um, two, the other thing you have to do is just death boxes. Is just um, there's at least two. There's two situations, right? Um, there's two situations I would say that you could possibly loot here, or two times you could have looted. Um, the first one being the first one being right here, I guess. Actually, three times, I guess. You count this. This octane here. You could have thirsty octane armor swapped, and then boom, you would have had these shield cells for later, right? Um, alternatively, it's caustic, which I argue is really dangerous. It's it still can't be done. Don't get me wrong, but it's very dangerous. Um, and then the other one being this fucking goofball. Where is he? Where is he? This guy. This fucking idiot. <laughs> you can totally fucking loot this guy. 100%. Like, right? Like, the only thing you have to worry, be worried about. Uh, I assume since you're on controller, you have the uh, taking damage close to the death box, right? Or something like that? No, I don't. You don't? Okay. 
Um, but you can get out of death box pretty quickly, right? Yeah. It's not, it's not super hard. Especially, the only thing to be scared of is if you're, like, the Sash. Where it's, like... But you're playing Horizon, right? If you're if you're in a death box and you get shot at, you just close death box through your queue up in the air. Like, you like you grab the armor shot from the box. You're in the air. You've taken, like, 70 damage, probably, by the time you actually end up doing this. Unless they just team fire you or something. You're typically fine. You can typically secure loot in some fashion, right? Um, yeah. Taking 70 damage for some loot is perfectly fine. And, like, that is completely fine, dude. Don't worry too much about um, trying to avoid taking damage at all, right? Like, it is risky, but, like, you do have to take some risks to get something. You want to minimize risks, obviously, but sometimes it's unavoidable. Um, and then using your thermite here. Um, was this to break the rampart wall? The thermite? Um, yeah. Yeah, okay. I think it's the best use, but it's okay. See. I don't know what that horizon was supposed to do. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's not gonna suck him past the rampart wall. I was trying to break it. Horizon was not gonna do that. It's not gonna help with that. Yeah, everybody's dead. Thank goodness. I don't know how the rampart died, but thank goodness she died. Net came. Net all this loot. You really didn't get punished because the guys were really bad and didn't actually like. They just. I don't really know how they even died. When did the rampart even die? Did your teammate kill him? Oh yeah, she was hiding in a corner. I oh, think. I guess so. Oh yeah, oh yeah, she dove you there. Okay, yeah, okay, okay yeah, you're, yeah, you're, your teammate killed the rampart. You're, yeah, your teammate killed the rampart, and even then, you've knocked like at least one person. It's a two v two. You don't need you like. I don't think you need to use horizon here like at all. I don't think there's really a situation where, where horizon is really needed here. Oh my god, looting simulator. Okay. So I'm gonna ask you now. I'm gonna ask you right now. What do you need? What are list of things you need, in like order? Um. So what? So so what's number one first thing you need? Probably like big shields, but big heels. Big meds. That's nice. Well, meds. Big meds. Okay. What else? Um, heavy ammo. I'll try ammo. Ammo. Anything else? And, uh, nades. Nades, okay. Yeah, this is pretty good priority. I would argue that this priority is more important. Ammo is more important than meds. Like, sure. Uh, like, sure. Uh, meds are important for fighting, but if you, but if you also just one clip somebody, you don't need big meds because you just take their armor. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, you, like, like, you can fight without big meds, but you can't fight without ammo. You can't fight without ammo. You, you literally cannot fight without ammo, right? Yeah. So it's more important to have ammo than big meds, but they're pretty closely interrelated. Like, um, so going in a box, those are the number one things you should look for. Literally, you'll see. I mean, I, I mean, I, I see controller players do this all the time. They, they, they open a death box, right? There we. They, they open a death box. I mean, you, you, you actually do it here. You literally go over here and then, and then you go down. So your looting priority is pretty. Your looting priority is pretty good in terms of just grabbing ammo. It doesn't matter what ammo you grab. As soon as you grab some sort of ammo, right? Is, is, is fine. You can swap to your friend gun. You can do whatever you want. Just grab ammo. And then you grab batteries here. So your looting priority is, like, good. You understand what you, you, understand what you need here. Uh, yep. But it's important that you take time to actually know what you need to loot here. And know when it's when, when, it, when you're done looting. I have this problem where I will gorge on loot when, I have, when I've had none. So I will literally sit there and be like, hmm, now what do I want? And it's like, I have been <laughs> looting the same 12 boxes over and over again. There's a res to your left, so I want to see you push that pretty soon. Looting is a lot more important in uh, no fill and solo no fill rather than no fill duos, but um, and in, in no fill duos you can, you can you can get away with with a lot more. Yeah, you you have really good inventory you now. So um, since you're sticking with with wingman AR right, since you've had all, all the options all the guns in there and you and you, and you stuck with wingman AR right. So what are the strengths? Yeah. So what are the strengths of wingman AR? Um. The wingman can be used up close or far away, honestly. Okay. Um, ammo efficiency. Okay. So, uh, W, M range. So, wingman range. Uh, ammo efficiency. Okay. Anything else?
um, like strafe speed. Yeah, you literally dominate. I mean, I I mean, this isn't just a wingman thing, but or or this is just a wingman thing. But strafe speed is so fucking good with the wingman. So the mm -hmm. so I you know why the wingman's better than ARs, right? At least in in my logic opinion, right? Uh, yeah. I well, I think. Yeah, like it's more more damage per bullet. Roughly similar yeah. ammo economy, like the yeah. strafe speed is insane. Like strafe I mean, super fast. Yeah, you win. You win long range distances because if someone's standing still shooting their gun at you or shooting their AR at you, you just go and then they can't hit you, but they're standing still, and it's just easy as hell to hit them. Um, so the so the strengths of the loadout overall, right? There's not a lot of weaknesses with this loadout, um, because it it dominates. Um, see, let me, I'm not writing the word dominate. I'm writing, I'm writing the word, uh, plus plus plus, in <laughs> all ranges, right? Because the flatline's good. I mean, it's a, it's an AR. It's it's good in every range. It's good. In, it's good close up. It's good far away. It's good in medium range. Wingman's also good in every range as well. Um, and then they both have pretty. They have decent ammo con. They're not amazing, but they're pretty good. Ammo economy, um. They both the weapons can both single handedly like like one v three, one v three equals easy, right? Um, anything else? Anything else you can think um, of? I can think of. Okay, so um, what? There's one definitive weakness of this loadout. Uh, and do you know what it is? Um, I don't think so. Okay, so the weapon. Uh, if you look at my if you look at my weapon tier list. You look at my weapon tier list here, right? There are two weapons. So, obviously, like, like the Rampage beats the Flatline, right? But um, there's one weapon, arguably two, that beat the Wingman, right? And that's the car and the G7. The G7, because of its fire rate, is really good. Like, like the G7 can outchow the Wingman and the, and, and the, and the uh, ARs, but not by a significant margin, I argue. But the biggest thing is that this loadout loses to the car. In close range, the average value of a car is going to be way higher than the average value of a wingman, right? Because of its time to kill. And the flatline can't outpace the car. The flatline can't outpace the car in close range. So this loadout loses to the car. That's the only thing that's really important with this loadout, okay? Yeah. Uh, so when you're spacing against an opponent, if they have a car, you cannot play close range. You cannot play close range at all. You will get shit on. Uh, you want to try and avoid going close range, and if you can, space your opponent really, really well with the loadout, right? So this is another advanced positional thing. Uh, if the, if if there's two range, if there's if these are your ranges, so if you excel in um, these ranges with the flatline, and then you excel in these ranges with the wingman, which is every range, because wingman's good in every range, right? Um, but the car excels in this range. What range should you play at? Um. Like the medium range in the middle. Like, yeah, like here, like like from here on out, right? Yeah. Because this, this is because this is where the car. Because even though it's strong for you, it's also strong for your opponent, and you want to disable your opponent. You want to make sure that your opponent isn't playing into their strengths, and you're playing into your strengths instead, right? You can argue like this range right here, and like onward is really really good, and that's perfectly fine as long as you have the wingman out for like this like awkward middle range, and not the flat line. But even then, you want you want to try and disable your opponents to enable yourself. It's more important. It's more important that your opponent is in a disadvantageous position than you are in an advantageous position, right? Because how many times do you go and you're like, oh, this is a good range for me to use the car in, and the opponent also has a car, and you're like, well, we just, well, I, I just enabled both of us by walking close to by walking close to him, right? And then at that point, if you both are equal ground, who's going to win? The person who hits more shots, right? And relying on your opponent hitting less shots than you is really bad. You never want to force a straight on 1v1. You never want to force a mechanic fight, right? You never want to focus on an aim duel. Aim duels are the number one way to trick players in, into being bad, right? Obviously, 1v1s are good. It's a good way to improve. It's a good way to practice. But 1v1s are not just uh, aim duels. They're not just me going, hey, me and you, let's fight, engage. Let's let, let's, let's just play a fighting game, right? It's like there's always these things like meds, nades, ammo, armor, blah, 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 everything in this game, right? So Apex should be looked at under the lens that it's a resource management game with 
FPS elements, right? Which sucks because it's a uh, it's I mean I mean it's it's a hero shooter, right? And hero shooters are usually riddled by really dumb abilities like Overwatch and like Apex. There's really there's a lot of really dumb abilities in this game, like caustic gas, horizontal like grenades, things like that, right? But the harder you lean into resource management, the harder you lean into this factor rather than this factor, the better the better you'll do in terms of like being of like playing smart, right? Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. Um So um make sure that you're using resources in a way to to disable your opponent and enable yourself but focus more so on this one on disabling your on disabling your opponents make sure that they can't do what they want to do okay don't don't play into their strengths at all trying to avoid all of their strengths trying to avoid all that stuff all right there was a res <clears throat> excuse me there was a res over here there's a second res over here question mark this is, this is the second res. Um, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Very good. That's super good target acquisition. That's super good understanding map geometry. Because she dropped down, so where is she going to be? Probably right there. So that was, that was really good. Very nice, very nice. I'm going to go through that wraith and then get going. If that other res is just going to walk around and be like annoying and not show herself, then like just don't spend too much time on it. Where the hell did she go? I... she disappeared. Oh well. Is she DC? I don't think so. Right? No, I, I ended up finding her because her teammate tried to res her. But I don't I don't know where she was when I was looking for her. I crawled back behind the fence then to your left, I guess. I don't know. Oh, okay. So yeah. So now, uh... Oh yeah, honestly, at this point, I would've just said fuck it, goodbye. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care enough about one about one individual kill. I just want to go fight like actual teams with armor and weapons and stuff. Um, okay. Very spotted. Where the fuck was she? A uh, dude. How, how did she? <laughs> dude, I don't know. That none of that makes sense. She just, she used her race invisibility. Oh my god. <laughs> that's the I, that's that that meme is gonna live on my stream for years. I can tell. So, where are you gonna go? You're gonna go Harvester or you're gonna go Siphon? Looks like there's people there. Care here. Or maybe not, maybe. Uh, okay, I see. Wingman Re. Can you explain to me the meme? Basically, I was playing a game uh, with randoms. And some guy's like, yo, bro, grab our banners, bro. Just ignore them. Just go grab our banners. Use, use your Wraith Invisibility to go grab the banner. And, like, that that's it. That's it. He just called it Wraith Invisibility. Yeah, I want to see you swerve more toward Harvest, or Harvester. Uh, Siphon here. But, rather than Harvester. But, otherwise, it's okay. Just use your Invisibility, bro. Yeah, literally. You're walking around the map, I get it. I need to... There we go. People. So. People. Like, right here. You should mirror this guy. You, you should just mirror this guy as he goes down the hill, right? I see slides jump... As he slide jumps down here, just just walk left. Just hard walk left here. Yeah. Makes it, makes it easier to aim. Makes it way easier to aim. Okay, dude, a fucking console player with a re. You're, you're gonna murder. You're gonna murder these guys, aren't you? <laughs> They're gonna die horribly. Zero comes down. This guy's flesh.
Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Good. Mm-hmm. 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 I actually want to point out that this is really good. I feel like you have played enough this game to understand and be able to read target movement all, uh, really well. Like I like I feel like here I want to highlight that you're especially fucking like you're looking at the way the guy's moving and and you already know how to counteract that. Like you know that this guy's climbing up this even it e like even if it's an epic slide and slides like that, you're ready for it. You're ready for whatever move this guy's gonna make. A lot of people when they get, they, they aren't prepared for enemy movements and to read them. So most people will see this guy climb up and go like ah. Oh, and then, and then as soon as the guy jumps down, they're like, oh, this guy's jumping down. But you, you, you were, like, ready. You were ready for that. Yeah. Good. Very good. Very, very good target reading. Very good, like, like, I mean, target reading, I guess. Target animation reading. Trafe reading. Roller Re is, like, dropping a semi-truck on a carton of eggs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. I would just keep going with this point. I don't, I don't really need much. Dangerous cross here, but they suck. I don't, I, it's not necessarily a bad one. Just because it's dangerous doesn't mean it's bad, by the way. I think crossing there is ultimately the right play. It is dangerous, though. It's important to realize that it is dangerous. I like, I, I like that you're looking for the yule, but you probably have to get a little closer to do, to do so. Okay, so if we look at the way that this fight is spaced out on, on a top-down level, right? Um, let me get rid of that. So, um, you guys are originally here. You guys are originally here. So let me try you guys in blue. You guys are originally here. They're up here, right? This fight's bad for one reason and one particular reason, and I'm sure you know what that reason is, right? Uh, high ground? Yeah, they have really good high ground on you. They, you can't really push them super well. They can push you super well. Uh, you do have Horizon, which kind of does mitigate the benefit of high ground, but it is still pretty hard to fight. And it's, again, 2v3, all that stuff like that. It's definitely the, it's definitely a perfectly fine play to rotate this way. And then to use... Uh, I mean, you guys cross... Oops. You guys cross under the bridge to deny the value of high ground, and then you guys ashport up here to, to high ground up here. Um, so now you guys are spaced like this. This is what the fight looks like, right? Um... Now, engaging here is pretty mildly difficult because, one, they do kind of uh, mirror you. They also walk uh, this way, right? They walk this way, and then they walk this way. Um, so, effectively, they're actually playing really smart. They, I don't think they know why. I don't think they know why they're playing smart because they're, yeah. they, they don't look smart. But this, <laughs> is, but this is smart, and do you know why this is smart? For Nimsy Miras? Yeah. So well, that they can... Um... Cut us off so we don't get the high ground on the building. Mm -hmm. They're they're also effectively controlling you in a space. So if you're trying to rotate this way, you can't you can't anymore without, without fighting them. If you want to go this way, you can't. You are actively giving up the good space. You like like they have really good space control over you. Um, however, they can't really control that space very well because they don't know how to. Uh, and they they don't know why they, they don't know why this is good. Uh, so the number one area you should fight for, right? So if you were down here, um. So let's go back to you being down there, right? If you're down there, uh, is this space... I'm going to highlight it in yellow. Is this space really good to fight for? Uh, no. It's okay, but probably not, right? Um, so now, if you're... So now that you're over here... Um, and now that you're over here, and they're over here, is this space good to fight for? Uh, I think it's like decent. I think the building is probably the best. Exa yeah, exactly. And the building, the, now that you're here and they're here, the area you're fighting for has now kind of become this here. And this mm -hmm. is the space you want to fight for. So why do you want to fight for this space over the other spaces? Because it's easier to control and there's a high ground. It's easier to what? Control. Yeah, it's like easier. Mm -hmm. it's, it's easier to control because you have better angles over it and it gives you inherently control of more space right so if someone is holding um 
if someone is holding the area right here, like they were, right? The area they control is kind of limited to like this, right? They kind of have this space and that's it. They can kind of control like this part a little bit, but they can't really control anything beyond this, right? Uh, however, if someone controls the building, that they can basically control like, they can't really control that space. They control like all of this space, right? They can control like all of this. And it's really, really good because of its high ground and the ability to fight anybody that enters in this space. Even if somebody enters, e even if somebody is in this space, because they control all of this space, Hang on, wait. Because because they control all of this space right here, they can easily enter your space over here, right? But mm -hmm. um, and but in this situation, let's say uh, to go back to here. If you're here, and the enemies are over here, right? Their space looks like this. They own like this sliver here, right? You guys own this space here, right? Yep. And the space isn't good because neither of you guys control this space. It's 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 very it's very very contested, right? Like you got like if, like if one of you guys is like, oh I got, oh I got a crack, I got or like I I, I cracked one I cracked one. What are you gonna do? Walk out in this uncontrolled space and like there's no cover, there's nothing to play, there's no cover to play. You can't really push up super well. That this is where you have to use like abilities to cross, or like ashport and things like that. I mean you you guys did that, you guys did the ashport through this space here. You couldn't control this space. You did the ashport through here to get to here to control this space, right? So if you guys control, uh, if you guys control this space, then boom, you can easily get, you can get to their space way easier, right? All that makes sense. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So that's why fighting for the space is really really good, especially as a no fill. In, in no fill, it's especially important to control space really because one, you have to win three chows. You have to win three chows, right? Um, as a solo, which can be really, really hard to do. Um, but if the ring, for example, my favorite example to use of this is um, dome. If we're in dome and zone three, it's like, oh wait, hello, why is it not working? And zone four is like this, right? Um, a team. If if you're if you're a solo no fill and you're holding this building, you have to hold off this building from everybody else, like this, right? You have to hold off this angle yeah. so they can't cross through it. They can't cross into the zone here, right? Um, so they have to push this way, and then this put, and then this can push them. This can push this team into this team, so they fight, and then boom, guess what? You third party that, right? Uh, this and space control is really really important in no fill for that reason specifically. And it's really good because uh, I mean, the bigger the margin you hold, you winning, you beat teams by, the better you can actually do it. The better, the more teams you can actually fight. Um, because the best way to beat third parties is to just fight third party like it's a three v three. So, and Horizon's really good at taking contested space because of Horizon Q. It's just dumb. I mean, you're, you, I mean, I was really gonna say you're probably gonna queue to the roof here because just the objective best play to do is high ground. You get to see them crossing, get to see them leaning in their space. And now it's much easier to actually engage them. Like, like there's those trucks you could have played, but they could have punished you so easily on the cross there. Those are two separate teams, right? Or those are the two remaining teams, right? Yeah. And no, I'm looking for sniper ammo. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. <clears throat> it's good. Hello, DJ. We're chilling. We're doing a coach test right now. We have another one later, too. Yeah, they're not actively contesting space anymore, so you're taking it, taking that glitch here. Walking up further. To the right, you have the angle of the team on the right out. I wonder how, I wonder if you're able to get a, a 3v3 on this team. They're taking your old space. Looking for a fight, yeah, you're gonna engage with this, which is good. That's not gonna get value. They can just zip out of it.
Do you play a lot of Horizon? Uh, no, actually, I probably only have like a hundred kills with her. I was getting absolutely smacked on Wraith, so yeah, Wraith sucks. <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> try something new. Uh, Horizon, I can teach you some Horizon stuff if, if you're interested. Uh, yeah. Playing her more than. Oh my God! You knew how to. Oh wait, you knew to throw the extra after the door blew up. Gameplay kind of clean. Your tragic plays on console 1.4. Don't roof here. What's the point to look through? Hurt. That's so smart. Pun oh, you can only punish the swing out because you were looking, but it's okay. That was, a, that was more of a timing thing than anything else. Playing is very smart. You're, you're you're trying to create an opening consistently. You're consistently trying to poke, trying to peek this team and create an opening. You're pre-firing angles. You're trying to actually punish them. And that, and that guy's a console player because he's in a corner. You can tell. <laughs> and then he's crouching in a Maggie fucking zoom, dude. No, this is perfect. Teams controlling buildings like this without controlling the outside of the building set themselves up for prime failure. And then you show that guy. That's like it's just that simple. You have really good trace speed here. Like, you literally just have really good straight speed here, and you deny him any, and you deny him any possibility of leaving. Like... You can see him here, and then he tries to walk outside, and you just straight to the left, and you just cannot get out of the door. You from Australia, too? No. Okay, hang on. Bro, you tell me you're fucking worried about you're worried about getting armor swaps when you pick up a blue three and one like that? Like come on, you're fine. <laughs> I like, panic. You... I think Ooh. I think that's my issue. I just need to start armor swapping on every box I see. Yeah, armor I I, I wish there was a way to, to practice armor swaps. Yeah. But um I was gonna be like, you're sure a looter, and I'm like, oh yeah, you're on console. <laughs> 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 that 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 was the worst swing I've ever seen. You know why that swing was bad, right? The octane. Yeah. <laughs> his swing, his swing was awful. Your was fine. He was just slow peeking out in the open, left like a hard, like giant swing. I was trying to trick shot him here, but my teammate didn't let me. Sad. Sad. Okay. You do, you do, you, you do plenty of good things in this game, but also plenty of things. Oh, <laughs> and plenty. Uh, there's also plenty more that you could have done in this game, but overall, not too, not super bad. Um, it's fine. Yeah, 13 kills, 3.4k game. Not bad. Not bad. Okay, right, so the rest of these are clips that uh, these are clips that you had questions on, right? Yeah, so they're mostly my teammate died in this one, so I was one to be throwing a team in construction, and I did not. I just didn't know what to do. Okay. Like I, I was trying my best to isolate them, but they were playing a little bit weird. But I definitely think I could have done. I could have um, made more openings. What are you coaching? Yeah. <laughs> I am indeed coaching right now. That's what we're doing right now. That, that, that is indeed what we're doing right now. Edge is your bottom. You, you have a one on this guy, if I'm not mistaken. Did you have, didn't you have a one on the guy that entered your building? Yeah, I don't know why I didn't take it. I think I was scared. Yeah, you know, understandable. I'm not. You know, I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'll. Yeah. I'm probably. Just gonna, <laughs> I'm. I'm. I'm probably just gonna chalk it up to either you. You didn't hear it, and like it's. 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 It, it, like. Like it's in the end game, or like your thought was more one guy, which is like fine. Nice strafe. Hmm, hang on, let me look at this again. 
You didn't get very many fights like these in the in the, in the VOD, so I'm, I'll, I want to break this down a little better. Very nice. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. My bad. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, death building, let's go. I hate when you, I hate Jad, I hate having to sneeze and almost sneezing, but not quite. It's fucking annoying. I also hate this climb up. <laughs> I hate this climb up with the horizon here, it's just barely too too small. What the fuck was that? <laughs> what was that? What is happening? God. These guys are having a fucking stock exchange. Farmer market down here. Oh, I, I really want to break this fence. Watson, we love Watson. Why is fence yellow? Colorblind settings. Uh, Trident has colorblind settings on, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's, you have Trident Oppie or whatever on. Yeah. It used to make my crosshair yellow. And, and then you could customize them, but it, when the, the like shields are all purpley. Yeah. I would 100,000% Thurster there. You need to Thurster there. You need to Thurster there so bad. Not not, not only is it the Watson, but you don't but you don't have shield bends. And now and now if you go Thurster and go in our box, you just waste two shield cells, which is a lot in in, the, in this part of the game. And the is 200. So like realistically, you would add another full heal with shield cells. Okay, you need to get a lot more guaranteed value out of Horizon Ult than just chucking it like you do. But with Horizon Ult, you need you need, you need to know where people are for it. You need to yeah. be a lot more confident where you are. You need you need information for the ult. The ult is the best use when when you get information, because it literally can guarantee you two, like can guarantee you one to three free kills. Okay, this is such a big dick play, and I respect it. <laughs> I respect it. I respect plugging the plugging the homie in. You could gamble on which side they're coming on, and it was the wrong one. Dropping here. I think we just, I'm pretty sure you did that by accident, by the fact that you came back up. I wish that was an accident, right? Yeah. Your boy, your boy is dead. <laughs> I know. I was like, good luck. Yeah. Battery. You go to this knowing what you need. Let me see here. Of course they have lifeline, dude. Fuck, <laughs> dude. Okay, 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 yeah. I'll, okay, I'll, okay, I'm gonna be for real with you. This might, this might be like the most difficult one v three of your lifetime. Mm. 
He's gonna be full. He's gonna be. He's literally gonna be full HP off that. Alrighty. I'm still drop down. Good. Okay, yeah, lifeline. Lifeline is especially going to punish you here, right? Because lifeline, lifeline guarantees full resets, right? Lifeline yeah. guarantees basically entirely full fucking resets based off of res plus drone. By the time you heal, I mean, I mean, the person literally heals faster than you, right? Because if you knock, because if you knock somebody, and they get res, but with and, and they get res with with lifeline thing, right? They not only get res faster, they get drone and they get a bat off, right? So even if you even if you get there before the bat does, they still have like. 50 to 70 hp because because of the drone heal speed right they literally have a full reset immediately because of it um so the number one way the number one way you go to dismantle a lifeline team this is the most difficult thing any no fill player will ever do and it's just a lifeline she will destroy any no fill player that comes across her path she is the antithesis of 1v3ing you cannot ever 1v3 a lifeline team so the way you got to do it is you got to knock the lifeline which is way easier said than done. You can't just pick one person to knock, right? But knocking lifeline is is a good way to do it. You can, like, for example, horizontal her. She has no mobility. Uh, if you catch her with, like, an ash tether, a uh, horizontal, something like that, right? You can usually uh, single her out and kill her, knock her, and then thirst her, and then say, fuck you. Or um, you, ha you have to thirst every kill. You have to thirst every kill. No... You don't have to armor swap. You just have to thirst them, right? And the, so, but however, thirsting somebody isn't as easy as just killing them and thirsting them, right? Because typically, a lot of them will, uh, a lot of them, you'll fight and you'll trade, right? You'll do like a hundred damage in, and you'll take like a hundred damage, right? Or you'll knock them, but you, but you'll take a hundred damage, right? But yeah. the uh, thing about that is, you have to win your ones very decisively. You have to win your ones by a really big, significant margin. Um, so when it comes to like one of three lifeline teams, you have to win by like an armor value, right? You can't take more than your armor value. So if you have white armor 50, if you have purple, if you have blue armor 75, or purple 100, 125 for red, obviously like that, right? Because the, cause the idea is that, uh, you can knock somebody, thirst them, maybe grab their armor if you need and then get out, right? Or, or even if you win, you just have to greet the thirst, right? There are sometimes you can't greet the thirsts, and those are the situations that suck the most. Like right, like when you fight uh, here. Or do you not come back here? Yeah, no, back here. All right, like this is a good beam. This is a good punish. You just you you. Like you basically have to thirst him here, but you you you, you have to thir you have to thirst him by fighting it in, in a different angle. It's right here, right? Um, you basically like challenge like this. You basically just have to like zip line and super. You you either have to like delay. So when people get rezzed, uh, if, if if you don't come back and thirst in the first like one second, they're like, oh, I'm fine, and they're like the lifeline usually like like look away, and like just be fine. Or you have to say, so you have to wait one second, or you have to like immediately thirst them. There's really not really in between because you wait too long, you can do 90 flesh and then they get res and then you re knock them again. Um, or, or, or you have to thirst them normally here. Or, I mean, if you're really, if you're really, really smart here, you can just horizon cue this guy, or you can horizon cue this guy's body. And then oh, the life can't res yeah. them. That's a really, really smart thing that I don't think anybody would do though. I don't even know if that would be worth it. Um, it's big brain. It is very big brain, but um, alternatively, imagine if you had this still. <laughs> yeah. Imagine right here, right? Imagine right here. You. Imagine right here. You. Uh. Where did you knock this guy at? Right here. You knock, you, you, knock, you knock this guy right here, right? Imagine you knock this guy. Boom, you come up, you do that. You just fucking, you, you, uh, you either queue up from the broken board here, or you come up from the side, and then and then you throw a Horizonal, getting at least the lifeline and the knock guy in it. Because if the Horizonal sucks the lifeline in, boom. You do plan one, you kill the lifeline. 
if it sucks lifeline and the guy you knocked in, boom, you that, that that's two kills. This guy gets up from the lifeline res, you you shoot him, kill him, and after killing lifeline, you know. Even if you um, even if you trade like your like if you trade like ninety percent of your HP for the lifeline, it's worth it. It's one hundred thousand percent worth it. That is just the like no fill killer. It's really really hard to overcome lifeline teams. You kind of just have to bait them and shit on them. You can't really ever push them. They have to push you. They have to push you. You you can't push them. Yeah. Um, so you want to try and create opportunities for that for them to push you, or I mean, this is where things like Horizon Q are really good for um, like throwing them off the roof and shit like that. Like I see you go for that guy, but obviously he's not fucking cracked. He's not like cracked anymore. He got a bat off, and he got the fucking drone. So it's like, like this punish is really good, and then you just die here because you can't do anything. Unfortunate. It's unfortunate, but in this situation, um, I mean, even even in this situation, this punish is really good. But at this point, you can't punish anymore. There's no way you're able to, you're gonna be able to fucking knock somebody when you're when you're this low, right? Like even no matter yeah. no matter if you hit every bullet, they have to hit two, right? And they're gonna hit two. They're gonna hit two. You're on console. You know everybody else has six. <laughs> True. <sighs> That's my best advice when it comes to lifeline teams. It's really hard to break down, but it's kind of what you have to do. Hey, I have been cheating in many games for years, and I would like to tell you about cheats. I love. I would love to give you insight on what to look out for in the next season. P.S. I don't recommend people cheating. It is not good for the game and the player base. Unfortunately, I found myself on the wrong path. I don't want to people know what cheats are planning to release next season. Be prepared. The shit some cheats are planning to release is wild. What the fuck? What the fuck? It had to be a bait, right? Definitely. <laughs> it's definitely a bait. And then, is this no fill trios? Oh, uh, it's duos. Duos? Okay. Hand holding adventures. Let's go. Yep. A duos is worse than trios, honestly. <laughs> it's like, Wait until you it's... see how I die. Oh, God. Let's go. Okay. If they die, if they die because you push them, I'll be sad. But if, but if but if you die because they push you, I actually can give you a lot of insight, a lot of new information. <laughs> yeah, controller leading. I love controller leading. <laughs> it's fucking dude. This is just. You're telling me this is the input you're supposed to play the game on. You're telling me this is the input you're supposed to play the goddamn game on. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this! <laughs> this is so bad! I hate this input! I hate this dumbass input! It's so bad! Okay, not bad. Play the door. Very good. Oh my god, go get that. Okay, well, I want you to go fucking big dick swing somebody. Okay, this guy's gonna swing you. Or he's just on a stroll. <laughs> he has gold armor? Dude, Gibraltar's always have better armor than you on pubs. And, and, and their Gibraltar. Every Gibraltar gets purple armor off drop, I swear to god. When I did my bingo thing, one of my things was purple armor, Gibraltar off drop, and I literally got it like three games in. <laughs> it's insane. Always. It's always Gibraltar. Fuck Lobo, play Gibraltar for good armor. Yeah, no, that, no, okay, you just controlled that guy so hard. Holy shit. <laughs> I would not be able to see that at all, MNK. Holy shit. I don't shit. think I did. Just aim assisted him. I mean, that's controller smile. I could, you, dude, I don't know what you're shooting. I can't even see what you're shooting at. Holy shit. Okay, anyway. Um. Yeah, this is fine. Um, hello? Okay, goodbye. Yeah, that drop is fine. That's a good drop. You could have gotten angled out really easy there by multiple opponents. I mean, there's fine. You play the door here. That guy is... That guy needs some new socks. I don't know what that guy's doing. Push that shit. Good strafe. Okay, you just control it. Okay, good. 
Dude, don't you throw that down the elevator shaft? Why is there another guy down here? No nothing like I can really comment on here. You kind of just. These guys are just walking into your fucking death trap. You're literally murdering these guys. Yeah, you have gold armor. You should not die. Smile. Gold armor is so broken early game in, the, in, the, in this building. It's so good. Sean Wraith. The, another, uh, where is this fragment loot? Where are these guys getting purples, golds, everything? That's the second gold armor I've seen in frag. Why are there so many people here? Investigations last an hour and a half. This one will be over in like 15 minutes, probably. Okay, good phase, by the way. I, I like everything you're doing is like optimal. It's good. This guy again from the ledge, he's reloading. Perfect. And then drop down here. Yes, perfect. Watch the w watch the drop down on you, but. Literally perfect time to grab ammo. You're literally your or, or meds rather. Fly line car. Full resetting. Perfect. Literally fucking perfect. Yep. Two kill. Two kills with fourteen hundred damage is fucking a travesty. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's a bit more to the right for that climb. By the way. Why that, that's why you missed that comment. Oh, dark range, you don't crouch when you when you when you're in a death box. By the way, crouching just makes you like obviously makes you smaller, but like it all, yeah. but it makes it makes it way harder for you to get up and move. What the fuck is that guy doing? Bird watching? <laughs> Who stands in that spot on the building? Do you not do you see him on the roof? So that's uh, that's unfortunate. So okay. So the number one way to beat teams that are fucking doing this to you, right? Because there's teams that will just literally WK you to death, right? I mean, mm -hmm. um. So did you see my coaching session about thresholds? Uh yeah, I did. Okay, so you so you know what a threshold is, right? Yeah. So the best way to kill these teams is to one have a really fucking strong threshold, like a head glitch, like a staircase, right? You just sit here. They walk up to you, you just fucking kill them, right? As they walk up. But the best way is to have a is is, is to reset at the thresholds back to back to back, right? So if you, if we're playing, right? Uh if we're playing on let's let's just illustrate like we'll say vaguely that there's uh thresholds here, right? Let's say that there's four that there's four thresholds and then that they're playing a threshold, right? We can use the example of this door being, hey, you guys are both on the same threshold here. You're here. Oops. You're here, and they're here, right? I did not pick that color, and they're here, right? Um, so in a, so in a one v two situation, it's a lot easier to break down. But we'll use a one v three for reference here. So you're in one v three, right? You're, you're you're the one, they're the three. Um, the best way to stop a team from aping you and just killing you is to reset at these different doorways and stairs and other uh pieces of really strong terrain. So. For example, if this is a door and there are three person kicking down the door, right? You can typically kill one person kicking down a door, right? If they all three kick down the door, boom. You can uh, typically trade one for one. Or you can typically trade one one of them for you on the door here. Uh, then once you do, you need to immediately have a way to get back to this threshold, right? Now, once you get back to this threshold, now the fight looks like this, right? Yeah. The fight looks like this. But now, but now there's two of them. So to, so to push you again, they have to cross into your threshold, which is your strong, defined space. So again, what, once they hit the threshold, once they start pushing to your threshold, guess what you do again? You you have to win the gunfight, obviously, but you knock one. Go, go back a threshold, right? Go back a threshold, boom. You repeat the same thing again, but now it's just one guy left. Now, that, now if this guy pushes you like a fucking crazy, 
then you know kill things like that you know um yep yet you have to have space to fight these three stacks that are just gonna ap you and you have to bait you, you have to bait their over aggression by playing really strong positions um so uh when it comes to things like, like this door right you have to make a decision right here you are either going to say this is a threshold that i'm defending this is a threshold that i'm defending or you're saying this is a threshold i have to give up right sometimes you will have to go with thresholds given your current state right what do you think the smarter play is do you do you fight or do you uh give it to them what do you think you do fight or give it to them give up give up okay yeah. so so why because there's no real cover in that room and they are double swinging me uh kind of those aren't really the factors that i would say are more are important uh the more th important things i would say are one your health two your face and three the most important probably guns not reloaded oh yeah so if they double swing you right there is absolutely a chance if, so if they double swing you right let's say you are instead full hp here right if you're full hp and your gun is reloaded here, you can absolutely fight this threshold with, with only two people. Because what do they do? One of them one of them kicks down the door, you won't clip that guy. Easy, dead. That guy's, in a, that guy's stuck in an animation. If you don't want to clip that guy, you need to learn how to read animations better. If you can't one clip that guy doing that, do that. Or it, or you rather, one clip that guy on the door. Um, The next guy, now you're in a 1v1. Kill the guy in 1v1. Beat the guy in 1v1. Worst case scenario, if you, if you have your phase, pop your phase. Over your face, go to the next floor. This guy's probably gonna go for a res. Punish the res, right? Yeah. Um. The uh, uh. So you have to consider the va the approximate value of these thresholds and things you can actually what you can control and what you can't control based on things uh like your like how much damage output can you can you deal here, right? You have flatline car. You can one clip with both those weapons pretty easily. You literally, I mean, you one clip how many people in this building? About. <laughs> You want you them to like you, I think you want up three fortified characters in this building, with purple armor and gold armor. Like like you can definitely kill these guys one hundred percent. Um, and, and, and you, you you could definitely kill these guys if your gun was reloaded if you had if if you had health right. This is why gold armor is really good. I said earlier that you shouldn't die with gold armor. Uh, all these thresholds right, especially because the, the way the map design is on this on this map with all these thresholds right, it isn't just. The threshold's lost. It's gone forever. You can typically just do like this. Be like, all right, pop a cell. Oh, they're pushing me. Go here. Go to the threshold. Pop a cell. 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 Go to the threshold. Yeah, you know, repeat ad nauseum, right? Um, and th and that's how you control teams. That's how you stop teams from um. That's just kind of how. You, that's just how you stop teams from pushing you and being really aggressive. Do you like that? That's how you kill the three stacks. That's how you kill the sweaty little nerds that run around the building, all, all, all hands glued together, things like that. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Uh, yeah. Honestly, I mean, your mechanics are insane. We already know that. Um, but uh, understanding positioning and things like that on a very mac on a very macro and micro level is really what's gonna set you apart from these players. It'll let you just literally take control of good space. Um, and while we're at it, um. Uh, do you so you know what to find the threshold, right? Um, I think so. You can what? explain it. Uh, go ahead and tell me what you think. To find the threshold, or like, yeah, or like, what do you think makes the threshold? What, like, like, what do you so think to find the threshold? Something that is easy to hold. Okay. Uh, yeah. That that is that is true, but it's more importantly defined by something that separates two areas from each other, right? So, mm -hmm. if you look at a door, right? If if I was Bangalore and I pinged a door, I would say door here separates the inside from the outside, and that's what a threshold <laughs> is. That that's what a threshold is. Okay, thresholds yeah. are a thresholds are areas that define one area from another. Um, doors are the most common and most basic example, uh, because one because if the door is here it's a threshold you can open and close the threshold open and close cover really really well so my doors are really good most thresholds but not all are also defined by limited strife space so for example uh if you're playing in the in this doorway here your strife space is limited to only in this door frame here like this 
You can only strafe like that much, right? Compared to the rest of the room where you can strafe, I mean, all that much, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Thresholds are also defined by really strong advantageous positions. So uh, I don't know if you play other games, but if you do, or I, I don't know if you've played games like CSGO, I think CSGO has a right-hand peak advantage because the character model sees more to the right than they actually do uh, like physically like their model does. Uh, Apex doesn't have that. Apex instead has a verticality advantage where your hitbox is higher than where your actual head is, right? So uh, you can like shoot like, or so if your gun, so most, most characters, right? Their gun, they hold their gun like this, right? The bullet does not come out of their gun. The bullet comes out of their head like that, right? Um, the bullet comes out of their head, right? So if, so if you're playing cover and you play like this, this is like, this, like, like, this, like, this is what defines a head glitch, right? I'm sure you know what a head glitch is. Breaking yeah, it down, yeah. understanding that boom, hey, head, every head glitch is the threshold. Every head glitch is the threshold. I don't know if you've seen me play like ranked or like that, right? But if I'm getting chased by a team, I literally just go play on me, play on the threshold here, and then, and, then we, and then we'll play the stairs. Just hold the head glitch on them. They push us, we just take no damage. We, we take no damage and deal max. Yep. So it's important okay. to know what defines the threshold, thresholds, doors, uh, things like uh, boxes, for example. So if, so, if, so if there's like a box here, and like if you're in like an open field, Actually, let me right here. Um, this truck, this truck here, is a threshold as well. This truck has two doors on it. on On a very minor level, it has um on a very minor level, it has two doors right here, right? So that's what, those are small thresholds. But if we look at the area, when we we're talking about areas, you can control earlier. Uh, what stops you from controlling area in this building? <laughs> uh really big thresholds like you like if you're in the building you can tr you can control all of the space pretty well right but what stops you from but what, what stops you from controlling this space well there's a fence here what stops you from controlling this space well there's a fence here what stops you from controlling this space well there's a truck here right mm -hmm. what stops you yeah. from controlling this space there's like a hill and like kind of like, and like some head glitches here things like that right so every area you control is defined by thresholds and those thresholds are what cause you to control space and what cause you to punish opponents like that okay again if we, if I talked about earlier, where you were here, and the enemy is over here, and I and I, and I asked you if it was worth it to push this, right? And you said no. Why? There's no thresholds here. There's nothing out here. You can't cross. You can't punish. There's nothing to hold. You can't punish. You can't cross. There's the the only threshold is so far away that you can't dismantle and take space, right? Okay. Because if you're here, if you're here trying to walk up to here, you can go to this threshold here, take control of this threshold, this lessens the, the space between you. But if you're here and they're here, you can't lessen that space at all. You just have, you, this is where you use abilities and things like that to take that space instead. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. This is how you effectively control space. And even in 1v3's thresholds, can, you can really play the fuck out of one threshold really well. I talked about the box example earlier as well. Because if you, ha if you have a box... You can play every side of the box. It's the worst looking box I've ever drawn. <laughs> Let me draw that a little better. But if you have a box, you can play every side of the box. You can play this side of the box and then make the threshold like this. So if someone crosses the box to hard swing you, they're crossing your threshold. And then boom, once they once you kill them, r rotate to like this side of the box here. Now, now your thresholds are defined like this. If someone swings, if if someone swings like this, they're hard swinging out of their cover, right? Out of your box. Yeah. You can dynamically change every single aspect of thresholds on the spot immediately, extremely fast, and it's how you dictate fights. All that makes sense. Yeah. Do you have any questions for me at all? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Um, before we go, uh, two things. So one, uh, if you fill out a thingy on Metify, if you fill out a, um, where is it? If you fill out a written testimonial, you'll get like 7% off uh, your next session as well. And also, um, 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 with the Twitch 7% off, you'll like save a bunch of money if you want another session. Mm -hmm. And if you could write a written, written review, it'd be cool. It, it's required for top mentor stuff. Right, um, 
And if you, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, I'll check in with you in a couple weeks to see how you're doing. But yeah. Yep. I feel like that was a good session. I was like, was just, that, that was pretty good. Got to talk about a lot about... Uh, I mean, I think thresholds are the number one thing that uh, you should probably focus on right now. And like taking mm -hmm. controlling space and things like that. But um, Yeah. I'll try to keep that in mind because it is something you have to think about, like actively. Yeah, think about but... it's really yeah. But once you figure it out, it's like you're in the matrix. <laughs> yeah, you're looking at every box, being like, oh, a box and this box, and you're just like looking at it on them all. But yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, obviously, uh, you can DM me clips and things like that. We've already we've already been through this. You're a repeat student, so. But yeah, uh, and if you want your own coaching session, go to my Medify. It's Thirty nine ninety nine for an hour and a half of good coaching. But if you're Twitch sub, you get seven percent off. So yeah. Okay. Uh, I will talk to you probably in, uh in the future, try to see your development. Yep. Uh, okay. I I I hope you have a good rest of your day, and I hope I hope to see you improve a shit ton more. I'm excited to see your twenty seven kill game. <laughs> <laughs> One day. One day. All right. All right. Cool. One. Thank you. Yep. No problem. Bye bye.